Jimmy, let's have a little breather. Are you guys okay there? You don't want to lose a few seats down here if you're yeah, if you, if you okay standing up. Um, okay, um, so we'll just roll pretty straight on. Um, so my name is yeah, so Jack Townsend. I've been involved in Cambridge UK now for about two or three years, and um, I've been sort of researching this area for quite a while as well. So what I'd like to do tonight, so I guess I'm coming at this from a bit more of an academic perspective, um, and uh, also yeah, try and think about it in quite a systematic way, and try and work out what's a simple way of describing. You know, when I came across all this stuff, uh, this fascinating, amazing, you know, smart green stuff that's happening in the clean web space, it's a bit overwhelming. It's, it's fantastic, there's lots of different trends. Um, Francesco's talked about things like disintermediation, and um, you know, there's, there's so many different things. How can you possibly sort of get a grasp on this whole big space? So I feel like I've got to a point where I, there's a structure here where I can um, conceptualize what's happening here, and I'd like to kind of share that with you today. So if you um, go to most ways of organizing this space, uh, or just um, organizing clean tech, I mean, this is a, in a sense, this is a subset of clean tech. Is everyone okay with the term clean tech? It's, a, it's an industry that sort of peaked in 2008, the idea of um, trying to use, uh, create new technologies to help us use resources more sustainably. And um, uh, uh, ITOS is organized this way, partly as well. It's really by resource. Um, it's looking at the different sorts of resources that are used, so uh, renewable energy, efficiency, lots of different ways of cutting energy, and then there's other things like water and food. So this is an important way of looking at it, undoubtedly, it's a really important way. But there's a lot that this can't really tell us. And really it can't tell us about smart, I mean this is about clean tech more broadly, and what smart means, the power of smart, why are we so interested in these technologies, why is everyone interested in them in lots of different domains, not just um, sustainability. Um, so I'd like to talk about the sort of structure that I've come to um, that helps us understand this space. Um, and it really is about when you look at one of these projects, when you look at one of these startups, um, how is it smart? You know, what does that really mean? How is it using digital to achieve what it's trying to achieve? And how is it green? How is it achieving uh, sort of environmental resource objectives using dealing with resource constraints? So I guess I'd like to draw these distinctions, and I'd like, and I've kind of come up with three boxes that we can think of in terms of how it's smart, and two boxes in terms of how it's green. So we live in revolutionary times. Everyone's really excited. You know, I come, I've been working here in the Impact Hub today, and you hear so much hubbub, you know, talking about different uh, digital projects in all sorts of different domains. We're living in the times of the digital revolution, um, when everyone's getting connected together. Machines are getting connected together. And, um, and so, yeah, how can we conceptualize what's really happening in terms of smart? <coughs> so for me, it's about the fact that all these people and all these machines are increasingly connected, and we have this uh, intelligence, this artificial intelligence, that allows us uh, to influence them and to control machines, uh, to do the sorts of things that we want to do to scale up. Um, so firstly, in terms of those machines, there's the buzzword of the Internet of Things, which is really hot at the moment, uh, which is the idea that you know, your TV and your, and your um, uh, washing machine is all becoming connected, becoming smart, becoming connected. And you're seeing now at least 50 billion devices connected, including our smartphones. Um, and that is growing, you know, more or less exponentially as things do in technology. So this is the first type of smart that I'd like to talk about, which is uh, automation. Getting machines, getting stuff to do things for you. Um, and this, I think, is becoming more powerful as more of these machines are available to do it with. Um, so this, uh, I would think, is the first type of smart. So the next one I'd like to think about is about people. Equally, people are coming online at a not quite exponentially growing rate, but at a huge rate, uh, including in the developing world now, up to three three billion, and go, and you know rising fast of the seven billion people or whatever on the planet. So getting up to half now. And there are two ways 
um, in which I see this helps us be smart. So the first one is where we, uh, the computer interacts with people as individuals, and it helps guide them and guide their actions. It informs them, it influences them in order for them to act and act more effectively or act in a particular way. Um, so this is digital informing individual action. And I think our ability to do that is increasing as more people come online, as we work out better ways of doing it. Um, and this is things like uh, behavior change, nudging, gamification, e-education, information visualization, all these sorts of things where it's one person and a computer. There may be many of those people, but they're acting individually. And then the second thing is when those people start to interact with each other, once the, the um, system is actually mediating relationships between them. And then uh, you've got the birth of social networks, and not just social networks, but marketplaces, uh, collaborative consumption, crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, etc. Um, so this, so these three things come together into a smart access. Sorry, I haven't got the time on where we're five minutes. Cool. Um, so yeah, so this is the the smart access, uh, as I see it, where either things are becoming, we're getting better at automating stuff, we're getting better at guiding people to do stuff, and we're getting better at getting people to connect together and be social. So examples from the UK Clean Web uh, scene, the Clean Web uh, community, are Hive, which is an automation system, it's a smart thermostat system that you can have in your house, and it automates your heating. You don't need to worry about it too much. It controls your heating much more intelligently, so you get more comfort, and it produces less uh, environmental impact, less use of resources. Uh, in terms of, so that's automation, then onto guiding. So Winnow is a, so, is a startup that you're working in a kitchen, a commercial kitchen, like a restaurant, and you type in the, the food that you're throwing away, and that allows the management to then start to control and reduce the amount of food that's being wasted. Um, and, but it's really about you as, as an individual and, and the, and the uh, monitor. And then moving on to social networks. So Street Bank I used last year because I needed to, it's the classic thing, uh, you know, you buy a drill and uh, you use it once or twice and football its lifetime. So instead I went and I found a neighbor who had a drill and I drilled my hole and then I gave it back and it was great. So um, Street Bank is an example of how we can do things more efficiently because I, there was no waste, I didn't have to buy something I wasn't gonna use very much. Uh, and that's an example of the social. So having an idea of these different ways of being smart, um, for me it helps, uh, there's lots of different things that can kind of come out of that. We can think about different revenue models, for instance, in terms of the business model. So if it's a social thing, then there's the potential to have transaction fees. Um, there are different development time frames and costs, probably. If you're right at the automation end, you're probably looking at more hefty um, development times because you're, 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 you're developing a cutting-edge technology it's a driverless car, for instance. Um, and network effects work differently. Network effects are most, most powerful at the social end of the scale. And that means that you can really, once you grab market share, it's really quite hard to shift you, uh, perhaps compared to the others. And the way that you scale is going to be different as well. So I think a lot drops out from thinking about these different types of smart. So that's one axis. So, but we are here because we are interested not just in digital, we are interested in digital and what it means for sustainability. So there is this smart revolution. How can that digital revolution help us with what we're hoping could be a smart green revolution? So let's think a bit about um, what green means. So I guess the central challenge of sustainability, it's not everything, but at the very core of it, it's about this ratio. It's about the human value that we're getting out, which is often put in dollars, not necessarily, um, compared to the impact that we have on our environment. And that impact is often scales with the um, use of a resource, such as energy, water, um, food. So it's something about that ratio. Um, and uh, that's what, what clean tech has been about, and that's at the core of what clean web is about as well. And uh, academically, this is often talked about as uh, decoupling being the main thing we're trying to achieve. So I see, as I said, two different ways 
in which technology, digital technology, digital systems, solutions, if you will, can help uh, with this decoupling process, with this uh, helping improve that ratio. So the first is kind of doing it directly, really. You've got <coughs> me and my staff, my company, my um, machines I own, whatever, and it can help me act in a way, and all my stuff act in a way that's much more efficient. Um, that's much more sustainable. And that's, we can call that resource efficiency. Um, <coughs> it's help where digital is directly, it's helping us make the most of existing resources. So then there's a more indirect way, so the first is resource efficiency, a more indirect way is where we get something else to do it for us. So that could be sticking a solar panel on the roof, it could be using a bike, um, Whereas uh, it could, could be buying a bike, it could be um, going on a train, but by consuming some product, using some clean technology, that then helps us be more sustainable. And then <clears throat> the digital technology has a, the digital system has a, spe has a role in the life cycle of that uh, clean technology. It could be marketing it to us, selling it to us, but it could also be helping develop it in the first place innovation process, it could be, um, could even be helping dispose of it in the end. In the various ways that digital can help in the life cycle of cl traditional clean technology, that which you know, people were very excited about in 2008, things like solar panels. So this is uh, the second category, I call it clean tech enablers, where it's digital for creating, selling, using, maintaining uh, clean products and technologies. So this is how I see a green access. Um, on the one hand, resource efficiency, which is helping us make the most of our electricity, our heating, our water, our food, our materials. Um, and on the other hand, um, in a more indirect sense, where it's helping us create and sell and use solar panels, and bikes, and trains, and other clean products, relatively clean products. Um, so this is the green axis as I see it, and that helps, that also helps shape things. It could help, it helps maybe talk, think about what the value proposition is. Where is the value being generated? I mean, obviously with a lot of clean tech stuff, it's about, um, it's about saving resources or generating clean resources, which are valuable. Um, but it's also about the sustainability impact. And from a financial, from an investment perspective, there are impact investors who care about impact. And how do we think about what the impact is? So. If it's um, efficiency, then in a sense, it's the digital system being clean tech. Um, and it's going to be measured in the same way as you might measure the sustainability impact of, of any clean technology, like the amount of energy saved. Um, whereas if it's the clean tech enablers, then you're probably going to be thinking about um, the amount of clean tech that it's helped enable, sort of thing, is, is how you might measure the impact. Um, so that's it. So, this, so these are these two, two dimensions of how I, this is how I, I guess, think about this space. When I see Francesco talking about the different things that are coming up, I, that, that's the mental framework that I put it into. Um, so yeah, we're getting from that six boxes because you have two dimensions. You have the smart, um, which is, sorry, that's out of date, uh, automation, um, uh, guides and social networks, and you have the, um, uh, the, the green one, which is either resource you know, uh, efficiency or clean tech enablers. And we talked about some of these examples already. So um, we talked about the, the, the resource efficiency examples of, of Hive, Winnow, and Street Bank. Um, in comparison, so those, th those are ones that are driving efficiency very directly. What they're doing, what Hive is doing, is helping you control your house more directly so that it functions in a more efficient way. Um, what Winnow is doing is allowing the person who runs the restaurant to control their staff and their, um, to influence their staff to be more efficient and manage their, their restaurant better. Street Bank is helping us be more efficient because of the way that we trade, that we're, we're sharing stuff between us. And then on the other hand, you've got these things that are more about clean tech enablers. And obviously in each of these, there is some clean tech in there. So I'll use sort of classic clean tech renewable <coughs> for this example. So 
in terms of automation, there's a great British startup called uh, Solar Brush um, or Aerial Power, which is either using sort of robots or drones to clean solar panels to make them much more effective. Um, there, in terms of uh, guides, you've got clean tech planning. So Helioscope is a tool that allows you to design your own design a, a big um, solar panel <coughs> uh, before you uh, before you put it in. So it's like a software planning tool. Um, and then in terms of clean tech networks, um, social networks for, for enabling, there's abundance, there's a whole, there's a whole big, I mean, this is great Britain because we're great fintech, we're, we're where the city is, um, so we have a whole load of fintech <coughs> startups like Abundance and um, uh, Trillium <coughs> that are um, big on connecting people together, bringing together the funds and resources to enable clean tech to happen. So this is, this is how I see this space. Um, <laughs> this is, I won't go into detail, but this is the same thing, but uh, this is the analysis I've done recently, just looking at the whole UK, um, all the, the sort of key ones that I could think of in the UK. Let me know if there's any sort of key ones missing. If you're in one, hopefully you see it up here briefly, um, but I'm not going to dwell on it too much. If we've got time, and if everyone's not too exhausted from having heard me Francesco go on for too long, um, I might just dip into each category a little bit and get a feel of the flavour in it. Um, so we're going through them in order. So automatic efficiency, which is where you've got automation, automatic machines, making the most of resources. So this is really heavily, um, this home heating sector, since Nest came up, there's lots of other people trying to do things like Nest, where you're automating your home. Um, and equally, it's that whole smart home sector of like turning the lights off when you're not using them. Um, so automatic resource optimization. Uh, and then there's an area around sort of virtualized machines. Um, so then secondly, moving on to guides, where you've got a person that's coming through the action of the person to make things more efficient. You've got uh, efficient behaviors, so donation. Hermione normally is a regular here, or, um, or Luke from Carbon Culture. Those are, those are personal behavior change um, systems that help you behave more efficiently because they are um, guiding you in a particular way. And there's Winnow as well. Uh, there's a whole load of stuff around Management, how you so it's a different scale. It's, it's the, you know the business scale where you're you're trying to manage a business and you're trying to uh, operate it in a much more um, efficient way. And there's, a, there's a whole load of, sort of true cost and carbon analytics um, of car companies that help you do sustainability accounting to be more efficient. Um, and then the social efficiency. So this is um, getting people to connect together. And the way that they connect together makes them more efficient. So this is the whole world of the sharing economy, which is really hot and exciting right now. The idea is there is this environmental idea behind the concept of the sharing economy. It doesn't necessarily apply to everything that happens there. I've certainly seen um, sharing yachts and sharing <laughs> luxury goods that wouldn't necessarily. But the idea is we can share things and be more sustainable. Um, it's also about coordinating people together in order to be efficient. So you could perhaps put, um, think about demand response in that area. Tempus here um, that uh, manage a market for you, coordinate a market so that you can sell your energy back to the grid um, in order to be more um, uh, for the whole uh, system to work more efficiently. So okay, so I'm just gonna I think rush off between the other ones. So this is now we're getting onto the enablers, the second level, um, and we could do that automatically. So we've got uh, Tesla and Teva which do similar things of optimizing, um, uh, they, have, they have smart um, uh, electric cars and electric trucks that are optimized using digital systems. Um, then we have planning, so this is the uh, guiding in order to, to enable clean tech. Um, so CityMap would be a classic example of a London startup that uh, because you are able to use, did, because you are now so much, so much easier to use, um, Public transport, then it makes public transport a more attractive option compared to driving. That's the idea. Um, and then finally, networks, clean tech networks. So this is to say, there's a lot of stuff happening here in London around um, clean energy investments, uh, open utility startup that started out of um, the clean mode meetups um, is in this space. And again, sort of coordination. So Glide, we have Mark from Glide here today, um, who. Are uh, 
uh, have a fleet of electric vehicles and use the digital system to coordinate that fleet to make it run more effectively <coughs> and get people to use electric vehicles. Um, so that's it. That's 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 the idea. That's the that's the sort of division. So I'm going to run a couple of workshops here. I don't. We haven't. Um, I can probably take a maximum of 12 people max um, on two tables, and um, but less than that would be okay too. Um, the two workshops. The first one. What I'd like to do is I've got a load of different um, clean web companies, not UK ones mainly because they're ones that aren't on that list already, and I'd like you to have a go at categorizing them in, and see how that goes, really. See if you can help me work out what, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, the language and stuff. Um, that would be really interesting. And then <coughs> we're going to have a break for 10 minutes, have some beer, and uh, you don't need to come to both of these. You can either come to one or the other. Um, so you, you know. And the second one is where we're going to think about um, using the taxonomy Investing. Um, so that's, that's where we're actually going to see if we can actually use it as a tool to do stuff. So we're going to think about investment and sustainability and what we can, how we can use this framework to think about what's going on in terms of that um, across the across the whole the whole sector. Because the idea is that this encompasses the, the entire range of what's possible. So that's it. I think we've all talked enough. Time to get interactive. <laughs> before. Um, so yeah, these I think these two tables are where we're going to be looking at our stuff, uh, my stuff, and um, to think about um, Francesco's stuff and Michael, then any of these tables here. Um, oh, the one thing I would say is that you will need to sign because it's kind of an academic thing as well. So you will need to sign a release form, which we'll need to sign pretty quickly at the beginning um, if you're going to come on our table. So do bear that in mind um, before before signing up. Um, all right, yeah, thank you very much.